This is a 100% Biga pizza dough. It's a test batch, okay? So I'm gonna fire up the pizza oven and we'll see how it bakes. But first, let's go back a few days and I'll quickly walk you through the process and how I made this particular dough. Okay, so I grabbed all the flour needed for this batch, which was 736 grams. Then I mixed 368 grams of warm water with about a quarter teaspoon of yeast. You know, I wish I could accurately weigh this small amount, but I don't have a scale that can do it, so we're using volume. Anyway, the water in the yeast mixture gets added to the bowl with the flour, and then it's sort of gently tossed to form this very shaggy biga. For reference, this biga is a 50% hydration. When the biga looks something like this, just slap a lid on the bowl and let it rest at room temp overnight or for about 12 to 15 hours. The next day, I transferred the biga to the bowl of my stand mixer. My target hydration for the final dough was 65%, so I dissolved 26 grams of kosher salt in 110 grams of warm water and added that to the bowl with the biga. This gave me a properly seasoned dough at precisely the right hydration percentage. I ran the mixer on low speed just until the water was absorbed and sort of a homogenous dough formed. Then I covered the bowl and let the dough rest for about 20 minutes. This step is called autolyse, which helps the flour hydrate and makes the dough easier to handle. After that 20 minutes was up, I mixed the dough on medium to medium high speed for uh, about 10 to 15 minutes until I got a nice smooth dough. I transferred the dough into a large mixing bowl, covered it up and let it rise at room temp for about another four hours. Finally, I portioned the dough into four 300 gram pieces, formed them into little balls like so, placed the dough into separate greased containers and stuck them in the fridge until I needed them. The dough will last for a good three to five days. This particular batch has been going for about 48 hours. Right, we're gonna kick things off with a little bench flour. This is a 50-50 semolina and double zero. Got my dough here. Okay. Actually, let's put a little bit of, a little bit of flour on the dough as well. And then this just gets turned out. This dough has been sitting at room temp for about three hours. So it is completely at room temp. It's not cold at all. All right. I'm just gonna form my outer crust here by pushing out from the center. Just like this. I'm gonna flip it over. All right, let's get this out of the way. Yeah, like that. And I'm gonna continue pushing out from the center, forming the outer crust. Once I feel like I've pressed as much as I can, I'm gonna pick the dough up and use my knuckles, just like this. And I'm gonna gently stretch the dough, kind of let gravity do some of the work, but stretching the dough and moving around. See, I'm just kind of rotating my knuckles around the perimeter of the dough, stretching it out. Just being gentle here. I'm, I'm putting some tension on it. Yeah, this feels, it's, the dough feels great. It feels extensible, I can stretch it. I don't feel like it's gonna tear. All right. That looks pretty good. It's a good start. Nice, nice and round. Now I need to top this dough with something and I've got something special in mind. I'm gonna do a little riff on Oysters Rockefeller. And if you guys don't know that dish, it's a classic, so you gotta check it out. As an ingredient, I'm gonna use these delicious oysters from Whitestone Oyster Company. They're farmed locally in the Chesapeake Bay. They're absolutely delicious. They ship them right to your door. I'll leave a link in the video description box. Buy some, enjoy them with your friends and family. They're fantastic. The first ingredient is my crema. This is just cream that I, uh, I reduced by about a third, maybe a half. Okay, season it with some salt just a taste. Apply a thin layer of this, you don't need too much. You know, Oysters Rockefeller, it has a spinach cream sauce uh, in it, so this is kinda a step toward emulating that. Yeah, that looks great, perfect. Okay, after that, a little fresh mozz. Mozzarella, okay. Uh, probably uh, two to three ounces, I would say is sufficient for this. You don't want to overload the pizza. There we go. All right, next up, some caramelized shallots. Okay. And uh, I'm going to use some tweezers. We're going to tweeze this pizza. All I did was caramelize uh, the shallots in a pan over, I don't know, medium, medium high heat with a little bit of butter. Shallots are sweet, so uh, it's going to add sort of that kind of that flavor profile. Beautiful. Next up, a little spinach. Okay. This spinach was sauteed 
with lots of garlic. Lots of garlic. I'm just gonna be a little liberal with this, kind of get an even coating all the way around. So the cream, the garlic, the shallots, the spinach, that's it's all reminiscent of an oyster's Rockefeller. The uh, final ingredient is uh, these guys right here. These are my oysters. Okay, I took these a step further and I smoked them. Now, you don't have to do that, it's totally optional, but if you do, here's a quick little blurb about how I did that. I filled up a half sheet pan with shucked Whitestone oysters and carefully placed them into my smoker, which, by the way, was set to 275 degrees Fahrenheit. Side note, if you don't have a smoker, a smoke tube just like this works great. I let them roll for about 30 minutes until the oysters were cooked through but still plump. At this point, they had a pleasant smoky aroma. Then I simply removed them from the smoker and let the oysters come down to room temperature. That's pretty much it. Once they've cooled off, you just put them in a jar like I did and they'll last for about a week in the fridge. All right, white stone oysters going on the pizza. I don't know how many we need here, maybe, uh... A dozen? I don't know, does that sound like too much? We'll see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. One more for good measure. Twelve. Perfect. All right, I've got a lightly floured peel. Do this, just kind of make this round again, huh? Ah, oh, man, that looks great. Here we go. There's some spotting starting to happen, some color on the back left-hand side over there. And... I'm just gonna spin this pizza around. Yeah. Just doing a little rotation to try to get some even browning. Bottom of the pie looks pretty good. All right. I think it's ready. What do you guys think? Not bad, huh? All right. Oh shoot, all right, hold on. I gotta, gotta clear some flour here. We don't want that on the bottom of our pizza. Okay. There's a couple things we can do to finish the pizza off. This is some Pecorino Romano. A little sheep's milk cheese. This is a nice little sharp bite to it. Perfect. Maybe just a little pinch of salt. Some freshly ground black pepper. And then, just a little bit of fresh parsley. Just to finish it off, huh? What do you guys think about that? Looks pretty tasty, huh? Final look at the underskirt there. Pretty decent. Spin around, you can see the other side. There you go. All right. Okay. I'm just gonna cut myself a small slice. Taste it, yeah. <laughs> I need a fork and knife for this one. All right, one bite, everybody knows the rules. Mm. That's a fork and knife pizza right there. I got it all over my face, don't I, Frankie, huh? <laughs> Let's try that again. One bite, everybody knows the rules. Mm. That's good. Two things right off the bat. I'd add a little squeeze of lemon on top, but I'd also try to find a way to get rid of some of this excess moisture and a little too much flop. Other than that, fantastic pizza. Mm. Delicious. Cool. Check out Whitestone Oysters. There's a link in the video description. Hope you enjoyed the recipe. Catch you next time.